$1.58 a month for up to three websites and a free website name? Doesn't all of this look a little bit too good to be true? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna try and find out for myself in this Namecheap review. I'll also take a look at how they stack up against other web hosting providers and if there's anything fishy with this extremely cheap web hosting service. First of all, I'll go ahead and grab the cheapest plan to test. And since I get a website name for free, I'll go for emmetandcreview.com. Wait a minute, this ain't free at all, it's $8.88. Yeah, so as it turns out, you only get trash domains with the cheapest plan, like .website or .fun. If you want a regular website name, you would need to buy at least the Stellar Plus plan. I'll just go for the .tech domain for now, I guess. And I get an error. Fine, I'll just try to reload the page, select the .tech domain again, and it's an error. Maybe the .tech domain is just broken? I'll try the .fun one. Yeah, of, of course, it's an error as well. To be honest, I don't have the patience to fight their broken controls, so I'll just use a domain name I already have, since I certainly don't want to pay the extra $10. Okay, so they force me to register if I want to do this. Now I've just got to wait a bit. And, of course, the domain check failed. Keep in mind that at this point, I'm still trying to give money to Namecheap. Dude, just take it. It's not, that's not how you take, it's not that hard. And stuff is already breaking all over the place. So what do you think will happen when I actually buy a plan with them? Because my hopes aren't high. They pretty much bullied me into paying the extra $10 for a .com domain because, surprise surprise, the .com registration works flawlessly. But it raised my plan price from $18.44 to $27.50, which is a 50% increase in price. They also want me to pay an extra $5 for an SSL certificate. SSL certificates encrypt your website and give you a lock next to your domain name. They're pretty much a must-have in 2021 because web browsers like Chrome or Firefox even block websites that don't have an SSL certificate. The thing is, they're completely free. You can get them for free yourself and I leave you a guide on how to do it right around here. Finally, I can finish up my order and go straight into the control panel. And here, interestingly enough, even though I didn't buy it, Namecheap shows that my SSL certificate is activated. So I'm glad I didn't pay the extra $5 because I would have been paying for nothing. Either this is a bug or Namecheap is just sneakily taking $5 from people here and there. Anyways, as you can see here, the website is currently completely empty. So let me just jump into my control panel and try to install WordPress. Wait, why is this taking so long? No, 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 no. Of course it's another error. Let me try this again. And yeah, the same thing. So I guess my manage button just doesn't work. Anyways, I used another method and installed a clean WordPress installation using cPanel. As soon as I was in my WordPress dashboard, I got a warning that my site is running on insecure and old PHP version 7.2. PHP 7.2 was actually developed back in 2017. And since then, in 2021, newer versions exist like PHP 8.0 that's being utilized by providers like Hostinger or SiteGround. 8.0 is around 30% faster than the old 7.2 version. So why is Namecheap still using 7.2 as the default version? I like money. No idea. They're probably trying to cut costs since you wouldn't even know this is a problem if you're not that tech savvy. The good thing is that you can go into your cPanel and use the PHP manager to at least update to 7.4 manually, which is basically a must at this point. Anyways, I spent some time tinkering around and I finally have this website ready to test. But there's still the crucial question of how fast is it? And can it handle more than one user at a time? And what would it take to break it? Well, let's do some testing. GT Metrics shows that the website takes 3.1 seconds to fully load, which is quite slow. You want for this to be as close to one second as possible. I wanted to make sure that this slow performance isn't caused by my theme. 
So I decided to take my website and create an exact copy of it on another web hosting company. For this test, I used an even cheaper solution for $1.25 a month called Hostinger. As you can see here, it's the exact same design, tested from the same San Antonio location just 10 minutes after the Namecheap test. My website scored an A and loaded in 1.7 seconds, almost twice as fast. And just to be fair, I also checked their performance under load. I've sent 50 virtual users to perform simultaneous actions on my website for 10 minutes. And during that 10 minutes, Namecheap was stable. It didn't crash, it was slow, but stable nevertheless. Anyways, how cheap is Namecheap? Maybe I'm just expecting too much of them. Well, take a look at this data. Here's a list of the top five cheapest web hosting providers. So coming in at $1.58, Namecheap isn't even the cheapest option. Hostinger is cheaper and there's plenty of other web hosting providers that barely miss the margin, but offer much better services. As it sounds right now, I don't really like Namecheap. I think they're hard to recommend because there are other companies that do pretty much the same thing, except better. To find out the best three web hosting companies that are cheap, watch this video next.